Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at the problem of finding absolute max and min values of a function of two variables on a region. The steps are over on the side. First step, find all the critical points of the function that are within the region. And then the second step, check the values of the function, plugging in your critical points, and then check the values of the function on the boundary of the region. So with those steps out of the way, let's get to finding the critical points. For this function, the partial derivative should be pretty straightforward to find. Notice you don't need the product or chain rule to calculate the partial derivatives. So if we get to the x partial derivative, looks like that comes out to 2x, and then plus 4. We're treating y as a constant there, so y will differentiate to 0. And then for the y partial derivative, looks like that'll come out to 2y, minus 6. All right, from here, we can solve for the critical points by looking for what values of x and y simultaneously make the partial derivatives either equal to 0 or undefined. The resulting system of equations that we get is actually really easy to solve. Notice the first equation you can easily solve that for x to get x equals negative 2. Since that is the only condition coming from equation 1, that means that we have an x-coordinate of negative 2. The other equation much, must give us the y-coordinate. So if you solve equation 2, that'll give you a y-coordinate or y-value of 3. So if you go ahead and put that together, you get a single critical point with coordinates negative 2, comma 3. Now it's worth checking if that critical point is within the region and that underlined part there, the condition, all x, comma y values for which x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 16, that's basically describing a region that is a disk of radius, not 16, but radius 4. So if you go ahead and check, take your x-coordinate, square that, add that to the y-coordinate, which is 3, plug that in, simplify that, looks like you're going to get that comes out to 13, which is less than or equal to 16. So that critical point is in the region. Now that we have the critical point, we're going to want to plug that into the function that we're given, the function of two variables, to check the value that we get at that critical point. So if you go ahead and plug in x is negative 2 and y is 3 to the function that we're given, this should come out to negative 13. And that is one of our function values that we'll be comparing with later once we start checking the values of the function on the boundary of the region. And let's go ahead and get to that, describing the boundary of the region and checking the values of the function on the edges or boundary. To describe the boundary of our region, we're going to start by noticing that x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 16. That basically is almost the equation of the circle. So what we're going to basically do is split this into an upper portion and we'll call that curve 1. And we'll split that into a lower portion. And we'll call that curve 2. Now the edge, the circle, that's going to be the equation x squared plus y squared equals 16. And to describe that, y is a function of x, we can solve for y. So first go ahead and subtract x squared. And then here, take a square root. Don't forget the plus or minus. And we get y equals plus or minus the square root of 16 minus x squared. Now that's going to split into two parts. The positive root, that's going to give you the upper portion that we're going to use and call that c1. And the negative root gives you the lower portion, which we'll call that corresponding to the curve c2. Now that we've described the boundary or edge of our region as two separate curves, y as a function of x, 
we're going to take each of those equations for y on curve one and curve two and individually plug them into our function of two variables. And that's going to give us a calc one absolute max and min value problem. So let's go ahead and start by plugging in curve one, where y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared. All right, let's take our time and simplify by plugging in y as the square root of 16 minus x squared. So we're not plugging in anything for x, but in the y variable, the input for y, we're replacing that and plugging it in with the square root of 16 minus x squared. So it looks like if you simplify that, you'll get x squared, and then the square root expression, but that's gonna be squared and then plus four x, and then minus six times that square root expression. All right, and that's gonna simplify nicely. The square is gonna get rid of the square root. So you'll be left with x squared plus 16 minus x squared plus four x, and then minus six times the square root. And it looks like you can cancel out the x squareds and get a pretty nice looking formula for the boundary value of the function on curve one. So it looks like we can write that as 16 plus four x and then minus six times the square root. All right, and from here, this now turns into a calc one problem we're going to want to take this function of one variable. Notice that only depends on x. There is no y in it. And we're going to want to check what the absolute max and min values are of that function on the interval of x values between negative 4 and 4. To find the critical points of this function of one variable, we're going to start by finding the derivative. And it looks like here we're going to end up using the chain rule. Think of that square root as 16 minus x squared all to the one half power. So it looks like for the derivative, that's gonna come out to four. The negative six is just a constant. Apply the chain rule, bring the one half down. We're gonna keep the inside the same. Subtract one from the power one half. A half minus one will give negative one half. And now we multiply by the derivative of the inside, the inside being 16 minus x squared. The derivative of that is gonna be negative two x. All right, now to solve for where that equals zero becomes undefined, you're gonna to wanna to simplify this. So it looks like you can cancel out a factor of two. There is a negative that cancels out there. So it looks like we can write that as four and then plus the two negatives cancel. Looks like we have a factor of six X, all the quantities with a positive exponent go in the numerator. And I can write that negative one half power as a square root in the denominator. All right, and from here, we're gonna wanna look for the critical points by setting that equal to zero and seeing what values of x possibly make that undefined. All right, if we start by setting the derivative equal to zero to find the critical points, we get this equation, a combination of radicals and fractions. Uh, let's try to get rid of both the fractions and the radicals. So let me go ahead and then subtract four from each side. We'll have that as six x divided by the square root. That equals negative four. Let me go ahead and get rid of fractions, multiplying both sides by that square root. So you'll get six X equals negative four times this square root. You can simplify that a little bit, noticing there's a factor of two that you can cancel out on each side. So if you go ahead and divide each side by two, looks like you'll be left with three X and then equals negative two times the square root. And to get rid of the square root, we're gonna go ahead and square each side. So it looks like squaring the left, you'll get nine x squared 
And when you square the right-hand side, be careful to square both the negative 2 and the square root. Squaring negative 2, that'll turn to 4. And that's going to multiply 16 minus x squared. Squaring the square root will cancel that out. All right, so we get down to here. And it looks like if you go ahead and distribute, looks like that's going to become 9x squared equals then 64 minus 4x squared. Now we have a quadratic equation where we can isolate x squared. I'm going to add 4x squared to each side. We'll get 13x squared equals 64. Next step, go ahead and divide by 13. And now we can solve for x by taking a square root of 64 over 13. Now, 13 is not a perfect square, but 64 is. So it looks like you can simplify that as 8 divided by the square root of 13. And those are the critical points of the function on the boundary curve C1, the upper part of that circle. Notice that the critical points that we found have a square root in the denominator, which is okay. If anyone tells you you can't have square roots in the denominator, they're lying and they don't know what they're talking about. So we're going to leave that as plus or minus 8 divided by square root of 13. You can rationalize it if you want. I'm not going to. Now, what we're going to notice is that the denominator of the derivative, that is a possibility of also becoming 0. And that means we might have the possibility of getting critical points where the first derivative is undefined. Now, that denominator is going to become 0 when x is 4 and negative 4. And that is the interval that we're considering. The left end point of the interval for x values, basically you think of the circular region, that was a circular region or disk of radius 4. So the left end point of our interval for x is negative 4. The right end point of our interval for x is positive 4. So the values that make this derivative undefined, well, they're also the values of our interval that we're considering here. So we don't need to duplicate that. So what we're going to do is check the value of the function on curve 1, the upper boundary curve, at the critical points and the endpoints, negative 4 and 4. Two of these x values of interest are going to be easy to plug in, negative 4 and positive 4. That's going to make that square root expression, the square root of 16 minus x squared, that's going to evaluate to 0 when x is negative 4 and 4. So let's do the easy values first. Plug in negative 4. That restricted function value on curve 1, that's going to evaluate to 0. And plug in positive 4. And we'll get 32. We're going to work through the next one, plugging in the critical point, negative 8 divided by square root of 13. We'll get an exact value, which you can also approximate as a decimal value. Notice there, the critical points are approximately plus and minus 2.219, and that's between negative 4 and 4. So let's slog through plugging in x as negative 8 divided by square root of 13 to our restricted function. All right, we're going to take the restricted function. This was plugging in the curve for C1 y as the positive square root of 16 minus x squared. We're going to plug in the critical point, negative 8, divided by square root of 13. And simplify that completely. All right, so if we go ahead and take our time doing that, it looks like we'll get 16 plus 4 times negative 8 over square root of 13, and then minus 6 times the square root of 16 minus negative 8 over square root of 13, all that squared. All right, if we go ahead and take our time, we're going to get 16, 4, and negative 8. So I can write that as 32 
over square root of 13. We're going to have the minus 6 out front. And then inside, notice the square is going to knock out the negative, but we still have the subtraction sign there. 8 squared, that's going to come out to be 64. And then squaring the square root in the denominator, that'll just become 13. All right, now with a little bit of tedious arithmetic here, you can use a common denominator and simplify that. And that should come out 16 minus 64 over 13. That should come out to 144 over 13. So here it looks like we get the value of our restricted function at the critical point. We're simplifying that slowly but surely. All right, that square root expression evaluated to the square root of 144 over 13. And you might recognize 144, that is a perfect square. So that's going to simplify to just 12. So it looks like here we get 16 minus 32 over square root of 13, and then minus 6. Square root of 144 is 12. Don't forget to take the square root of the denominator as well, giving you another denominator of square root of 13. All right, now if you go ahead and simplify this, notice here you can basically write this all as a fraction over square root of 13. You have negative 6 times 12, That'll become negative 72. So if we were to write this all with a common denominator, the common denominator being square root of 13, we get kind of a unpleasant looking exact value here. And it looks like here we all have the same uh, denominator for those fractions. And we have negative 32 minus 72. That comes out to negative 104. And then plus 16. Square root of 13. All divided by square root of 13. And that is the exact value of the restricted function on curve 1 at the 1 critical point. Negative 8 divided by square root of 13. Now, just for reference, to do the comparison, you can plug that into a calculator, and you'll get that this approximately evaluates to negative 12.844. All right, we're going to write it in the exact value, but in the table, we'll put both just to make the comparison a little bit easier. So let's go back to our table of values from above. Plugging in the other critical point, positive 8 divided by square root of 13, that is equally tedious. And if you go through pretty much the same work, a lot of the steps give the same simplification for the numerical values. What you're going to get instead, and take your time with this, you'll get the exact value as negative 40 plus 16 times square root of 13 all over square root of 13. And again, just take your time with that. It's exactly the same as what we did with plugging in negative 8 divided by square root of 13. And if you go ahead and get, and get an approximate decimal value for this critical point value, that comes out to about 4.906. All right, and these are the values of interest of our restricted function on curve 1, the upper part of that circle. Let's go ahead and check for the absolute max and min values, the values of interest on the bottom portion, curve 2. The only difference with the work for checking the values of the function on curve 2, the bottom portion, is that the y, the function, just has an extra negative there. So we're going to plug in y as negative the square root of 16 minus x squared. And what we get for the function now, just of one variable, 
because we're restricting it to curve two, it's going to become x squared. We're going to go ahead and square negative the square root of 16 minus x squared. That's all squared. We have plus 4x and then minus 6. And be careful there. We're going to get a negative that cancels. We're replacing y with negative the square root of 16 minus x squared. And that is really the only difference we're going to get instead of a negative from before, a positive in front of 6. So if we simplify this, looks like we'll have x squared and then plus 16 minus x squared plus 4x, but now plus 6 times the square root of 16 minus x squared. And from there, notice you can, again, simplify. The x squareds cancel out, and this simplifies to just 16 plus 4x, which we had before, but now plus 6 times 16 minus x squared. All right, and from here, it's all the same work from what we did before on checking the boundary values on curve one. If you go ahead and calculate the derivative, the same as we did for curve one, you'll find that you eventually get the same critical points for this restricted function on curve two. Again, the critical points work out to positive and negative eight divided by square root of 13. And the rest of the work is again, virtually identical, just with some subtle changes in one or two signs here and there. So let's go ahead and check the values of interest, our function at these two critical points and the endpoints of our interval here, negative four and four. Now that we have the critical points, we can check the values of the restricted function on curve two at the endpoints and critical points. All the work is identical to before. Negative four, when you plug that in for x there to our restricted function, that's gonna evaluate to zero. And when you plug in four, well, that's gonna evaluate to 32. Plugging in the critical points, positive and negative eight divided by square root of 13. Again, that work is very similar to what we did earlier in the video. So take your time with that and you'll get similar fractions, 40 plus 16 times square root of 13 all over square root of 13. And then for the positive critical point, you get a 104 instead of the 40 there. All right, if you write those as their approximate decimal values, those values at the critical points come out to about 27.094 and 44.844. At this point, we have all the calculations done we just need to compare all of the values of interest, the values of our function at the critical point, the values of the function on curve one, and the values of the function on curve two. Let's put that all on screen together. At this point, we just need to compare values. So let's start by looking for the biggest function value. And that looks like That's over there, the absolute max value, the biggest function value that we get. This is on curve two, the bottom portion of the region or bottom boundary curve. And that's 44.844. And if you now look for the smallest value, looks like we get that here at the critical point and that comes out to negative 13. And for this problem, that is the answer the absolute max value is 44.844. The absolute min value is negative 13. Now, for some of your courses, you might want to determine those are the values, but where do they occur? And if we take a look at the max value, that's an X value of eight over square root of 13. And if you take that X value and plug it into the curve describing C2, looks like what you can find is you'll get the Y value there. That's going to come out to negative 12 
over square root of 13. And the critical point value, negative 13, that was at the critical point, negative 2, comma 3. For this problem, we're just interested in that absolute max function value and absolute minimum function value. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Like and subscribe.